Hi Andy here from Andy's Tech Tutorials. Now if you have ever tried to attach a PowerPoint presentation to an email to send to a colleague or to send somebody perhaps running a conference, then you may have occasionally stumbled across a message which says that the file size is too big to include as an attachment. In this particular video, I'm going to take you through some simple steps within PowerPoint to reduce the size of your PowerPoint presentation, allowing you to hopefully add it to an attachment within your email. Now, generally speaking, the reason that you'll get that message is because for most emails, you can't include attachments over around about 10 megabytes. And that's a total size of all attachments. So if you've tried to include maybe a couple of images and a PowerPoint that's taken above the 10 megabytes, then often you have to decide which ones you want to remove or maybe send as a couple of different emails. It's much easier though, if you look at your PowerPoint and look at how to reduce its file size before attaching as the email. So if you can get it below the 10 megabytes, then you should be fine for most email providing services. In this presentation you'll see on screen here, this is just a standard template that I've downloaded from freepowerpointtemplatesdesign.com. And what I've done is I've included a couple of my own images in this one to take it above the 10 megabyte threshold. So you'll see this one's actually 12 megabytes in size. I've placed a really big high resolution image on the first slide. I've included some high resolution images here, which they're actually very small images on screen, but they're high resolution images that I've downloaded from Pixabay and dropped in. So we've got three people here from the team. I've got a couple of different images here. Again, I've purposely downloaded the um, either the highest resolution or the second highest resolution images. So most of these are around about 500 kilobytes to um, a, you know, three or four meg each. And then if I scroll down, I've got a high resolution picture here of New York. Now it's only actually displaying half of the image, but this is a four or five megabyte image itself here. If I swipe across, you'll see I have the same PowerPoint presentation with images which are still crystal clear on screen, still look really, really good. And I'll scroll down to the New York one here. But the difference is this PowerPoint is only seven megabytes in size and not 12. So we've pretty much half the size of this file. And I'm gonna show you in this video how I did that. Now the thing to note here is that whilst this is displayed on a screen, it's still high enough quality to look really, really good. And I'm gonna show you how to do that just now. Let me jump back to my 12 megabyte PowerPoint just now. Go back to the first slide. So if I go up to the file menu and go down to properties, this is where you can find out the size of the particular PowerPoint presentation. So this one here is 12.8 megabytes, okay? Um, you can also right click on the file and go to get info if you want to find out this information outside of PowerPoint, but using the file and properties menu is a quick way of seeing the file size. So we want to get this down below at least 10 megabytes to be able to include in an email. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the file menu and I'm going to go down to compress pictures. So compress pictures. Once you click on that, what you'll see is you get this pop-up menu here. Now the thing to note here is it retains the settings that you last used. So I'm gonna change this one up to high fidelity because this is what you'll find that the standard kind of compression is. So basically, if you haven't applied any compression to the images within your PowerPoint presentation, they are all going to be the highest resolution that they can be. They'll basically be the same as use original quality, okay? So they'll be the source size. Now in this case, I've purposely brought in loads of high resolution images to this PowerPoint presentation. So it's going to be really high in terms of the file size. What I want to do here though, is I want to have a look at some of these other options. So I'm not going to use original quality because in that case it will basically just keep the size just the same because it's not going to apply any compression. What I'm interested in though is if I was creating this PowerPoint for printing and I'm talking about high resolution, high quality printing, then even using the print option here would drop the pixels per inch down to 220 and would allow some compression and file size reduction for this presentation. But I'm gonna drop it down to on screen because if I am sending this via email, I don't know if the person is going to open it and view on screen. I don't know if they're going to perhaps show it at an event. But by dropping it down to 150 pixels per inch or on screen, I know that if it is being viewed on screen, it's going to be suitable. 
Now you'll see here it says here delete cropped areas of pictures. What this means is if you have expanded an image out with the sort of confines of the slide or if you've maybe dropped it into a small box, if there's any extra areas of the pictures, they will be cropped and it means that it will reduce the file size. So it helps with that as well. Now you don't need to choose that one or have it ticked, but I'm gonna leave that one checked just now. Now you'll see here it says apply to all pictures within this file or selected pictures only. Now I've not selected individual images, I'm quite happy for this compression to be applied to all of the images within this PowerPoint presentation. So all I need to do now is I need to just click OK. And then what I'm going to do is, if I go back up to the file menu and then go to properties, you'll see that it's still listed as 12.8 meg. And that's because although it's applied the compression, the file size won't have changed until I save this PowerPoint. So I'm now going to use Command and S on my keyboard to save this PowerPoint presentation. And then if I jump up to File and Properties, you'll see we've now dropped it down to just under seven megabyte. So we've dropped it by about five megabytes, which has taken us well under the 10 megabyte threshold. Now, if I run through the PowerPoint, you'll see that the images are still completely fine. You can make them out. Go down to these ones here. They still look really nice and clear, but we've applied that compression and we've reduced the file size. If I go down to the New York one, the one that was about 4,000 um, pixels or about four or five megabytes, this one will have been dropped to at least half and we'll be able to see that we can still view all of the details within this image. Even if I go into full screen mode here, the images still all look to be of a really high quality. So there's a lot of vector graphics in there. If I get back through to where I've actually included some images, which is here, you'll see on screen, these still look really, really good. So what I would say to you is, if you are looking to reduce your file size of your presentation, then using the compressed pictures option is a must. Ideally, before you bring the images in, you should think about compressing them anyway. So you could crop an image to reduce its size, you could save it as a different format, or what you can do is you can use a compression tool on your computer, such as Image Optim, which I actually have a video tutorial for. I'll link to that in the description and I'll put a card above. But compressing your images before you bring them into your PowerPoint is good practice. It's a good way of ensuring that your final size will remain small from the get-go. But if you do want to, then of course you can compress this way from within PowerPoint. And one last thing to highlight is if I have gone to the compression menu and maybe compressed my images, I might want to undo that compression and then I might want to change that, for example, to let's say print. Then I'll click OK. I'm going to save this one because we might be sending to somebody for print. And then if I go to properties, you'll see that the size is still under the 10 megabytes for this particular presentation, but it is slightly bigger than it was before. So there's maybe about one and a half closer to two megabytes difference between uh, print compression and the on screen. But really for most of us, you probably don't need to go any higher than the printing compression. Anyway, I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please remember to give it a like, feel free to comment below and feel free to subscribe to my channel for more tips. But thanks again for watching.